Hello, and welcome. This is Michelle, hosting your late night radio program. Today, I'm going to share with you a spine chilling story. Have you ever raced to catch the last bus home late at night? The dim interior lights always seem dreamlike, with the darkness outside streaming past as the wind blows in from the windows. If this scenario strikes a chord with you, then this story will definitely resonate deeply. It originates from an ordinary university student whose life took a turn on one seemingly ordinary night, all because he boarded the last bus. This is not just an adventure story, but also one of the supernatural, the unknown, and perhaps even death itself. You might wonder, what did he avoid on that night? What did he witness? Now, dim your lights, double check your locks and windows, and listen to me as I unravel this gripping tale. Only if you dare to listen can we, together, lift the veil of mystery off this story. Looking back to my junior year of college, as the end of the year approached, I was in a race against time with my thesis. Inside the Grand Library, only a few people remained amidst the silence, disrupted solely by the sound of turning pages. As my pen touched the paper for what would be the last time that night, I suddenly realized it was already 11.30 p.m., and I was just 15 minutes away from the last bus departure. Not being a resident student, missing the bus meant I would have to spend the night in the library. In a rush, I packed up and darted toward the stairs. Exiting the library building, I was greeted by a cold wind that sent shivers throughout my body. I tightened my coat collar as fine rain sprinkled from the sky. There, not far from the school, was the bus I needed to catch, the Route 375, with its engine running and dim headlights flickering, signaling an imminent departure. I hastened my steps towards the bus, shouting, Wait! Someone is still coming! As if the driver had noticed me, the closing doors reopened. Out of breath, I climbed aboard and took a quick glance around. A middle-aged man at the wheel, a young female ticket collector, and me, claiming a solo seat near the door. Behind sat an old lady and further back, a young couple nestled together, making us a total of four passengers. The bus set off slowly towards Xiangshan, under the dim and rainy night sky. The rain grew heavier, mingling with the occasional playful chatter from the couple at the back. The quiet was striking, even the bus's engine noise was absent, an anomaly for vehicles of that era. Fatigued from a day's toil, I failed to catch on, and checking my watch, found it was 11.55 p.m. The streets were nearly deserted. The November night in Beijing was bitterly cold, especially in such secluded areas. My journey home from college would normally take around an hour, partially covering a mountainous stretch. As the bus proceeded to sway gently, notably smoother than usual, I leaned my head and allowed myself to doze off. It wasn't until we were about to enter the mountain road that the driver erupted in curses about ghosts, and that's when we noticed a shadowy figure in the distance gesturing for the bus. We should probably stop, commented the conductor, noting the frigid weather, and that we were indeed the last bus of the night. The bus halted and a disheveled woman, dressed in a white robe, her face deathly pale, boarded. She walked straight down the aisle to the back and took a seat. A cold chill crawled up my back as she passed by. Every one of us was startled, tense, with the ticket collector standing frozen in shock. After a while when nothing more happened, the tension eased. Only the old lady behind me kept turning her head, staring at the woman who had seated herself at the back. The bus continued on, passing three more stations, after which the couple alighted. The driver and the ticket collector joked comfortably until the old lady behind me stood up abruptly, furiously accusing me of stealing her wallet and hitting me. Confused and angry, I denied the accusation and defied her to prove it at the nearby police station. When the bus stopped, she pulled me off with her. 
Watching the bus drive away, the lady exhaled deeply. Irritated, I asked about the police station, to which she replied hauntingly, I just saved your life. She explained that the last person on board was not a human, but a ghost, a claim I initially dismissed mockingly. However, when she recounted seeing that the woman had no legs when the wind lifted her skirt, I was left speechless and sweating in shock. Upon reaching the police station, I borrowed a phone, the era before mobiles were widespread, to inform my family. My parents were initially frightened by the midnight ring, but they calmed after learning I was safely at the station. The old woman and I relayed the strange events to the police, who skeptically considered us mentally disturbed, until they received a report at 5 a.m. about the missing 375 bus that never made it to Xiangshan. The news soon broke. The missing bus was found three days later near the Miyun Reservoir, over 100 kilometers from Shangshan, heavily damaged with three decayed bodies inside. Mysteriously, the bus had been off its route, and strangely, the fuel tank was filled with blood, not petrol. The rapid decomposition of the bodies within less than two days was scientifically inexplicable, confirmed as not man-made by autopsy. No surveillance footage showed the bus on its expected route toward Myun. Years passed, and rumors of the missing bus occasionally resurface, claiming it haunts certain roadways at night. Since then, I've never dared to board the last bus ever again. As we reach the end of tonight's tale, I, Michelle, find myself ensnared by the haunting echo of it. The story reminds us that reality is far more intricate and vast than we often perceive. Just as a misty shadow lurks at the fringes of a dimly lit street, so does the unknown linger at the edges of our consciousness. This tale of the last bus is more than a ghost story. It's a testament to the thin veil separating the ordinary and the surreal. In the deep silence of the night, remember, Reality can blur, and what seems mundane may hold lurking supernatural encounters just beyond the corner. As we say good be this evening, I leave you with a chill creeping down your spine, a moment's hesitation in the dark, a second glance over your shoulder. Keep safe, keep curious, and keep reflecting on the shadowy fringes of your everyday life. Good night, dear listeners, until we meet again in the diffuse twilight of late-night storytelling. Remember, darkness holds mysteries only for those daring enough to listen. Good night and sweet dreams, or should I say, thrilling nightmares. <laughs>